Hi everyone, I'm Trey, I'm a software engineer, and today we're gonna to be talking about bringing NeoVim-like configuration to the browser with Qt Browser. The reason we wanna do this is so that we can fine tune our browser experience the same way that we fine tune our editor experience to get maximum efficiency. So, what makes NeoVim configuration so useful? Well, firstly, it's its simplicity. Being able to change the editor's config with just a few commands makes it very easy to try out what options work for you, what options don't work for you. And then when you want to save those, you can easily put those into a VimRC and get uh, the exact same output repeated. We see this with VimScript. And if you want something more complex, you can use Lua. And then Lua also is useful for creating new plugins, things like Telescope or Lazy. And of course, we have that integration with the underlying system. I can integrate uh, formatters like Prettier. I can integrate fuzzy finders like FZF into my editing experience to get things done. So I have the power of my entire operating system integrated into the, my editor. And lastly, of course, we're gonna get speed from this. And that speed comes from muscle memory. Being able to think about an action and then have my fingers kind of do the action automatically because I have the muscle memory ingrained in me makes me very, very fast and very, very efficient when I am editing buffers, when I'm swapping back and forth between the editor and other terminal programs. And it is one of the cruxes of my current workflow. So how can we do this in Qt Browser? Well, firstly, Qt Browser also has a command mode so that we can change configuration values on the fly as we're using the browser. This makes it easy to test out different configurations to see what, what works, what doesn't work, what do I like, what don't I like, what makes me individually faster. Uh, when you hit those set commands, it automatically saves it to a YAML file that you can edit yourself if you want, but typically you want to just use the commands. And if you want to get a bit more power, you can always make a config.py and have the power of Python included in your config. And of course, the big one is system integration. So user scripts are a bridge between the browser and your underlying OS, where you can use any utility that exists on your system to and integrate it into your browsing experience. And that opens up a ton of doors and allows for some great efficiency. So let's take a look at what configuration might look like. Firstly, we have some aliases. Aliases are similar to user commands in NeoVim, and they essentially allow us to create shortcuts for more complex operations. For example, I have this L alias that spawns a user script called a localhost, and I can pass arguments to it and other things like that. I have a toggle dark mode, which is a shortcut for changing this configuration value to swap on and off dark mode. I have a toggle ad block that will change the, uh, the setting for ad block enabled for the current do URL domain that I'm on, which is great for when I'm on a website and I wanna get past that pesky, hey, you have ad block on, can you turn it off? I could just flip it off and have the page reload. Another thing that is included in bindings are key bindings. I have a binding for toggling dark mode on and off, semicolon D, and I have committed this basically to muscle memory. So whenever I'm on a web page and I get blinded by the white screen, I can quickly hit two keys and boom, I have dark mode. It's that simple, it's that quick. Uh, there are other conveniences that you can take advantage of because we have these bindings, like being able to yank a URL in markdown format, or I have another one that yanks URLs in Git format so that I can clone repos without having to copy the URL from the page. And then of course, there's the common ones like uh, sourcing our config file. And now where the real power shows itself is truly in these user scripts, which again is a bridge between the browser and the underlying OS. And the way that these communicate is through a first in first out. And all the information about the browser is given through environment variables. And I have a few here, for example, Qt HTML is the fully rendered web page HTML in a temporary file. Qt text is just the parsed out text uh, Qt mode is the current mode that the user script was called from. So for example, there's a visual mode called caret mode. There's normal mode, which is just the mode where you're scrolling up and down. 
there's hint mode where you're following a link or a reference to another page or a video. And then you have cute command text, which allows you to parse out exactly the string that's been typed in the command line. And you could do some cool and fancy things with that. And so today I have two examples for you of what can be done using these user scripts. Firstly, we have a simple example where we're going to yank the Git formatted URL of the repo that I'm currently on. So often when I'm browsing GitHub and I'm on a repo and I'm like, you know, this is a pretty cool repo. I think I want to clone it. I don't want to have to copy the URL by clicking the little green button that says code and grabbing the SSH formatted URL. I want to be able to do this extremely quickly. So I wrote this user script and this is in shell where I take the cute URL, which is the URL of the current page that I'm on as, as an environment variable from cute browser to the script. I run a few set commands to convert it from the HTTP version to the Git version. And then I echo that into my clipboard. And then I send a message about the cute browser effectively saying that the process has been done. Once I have that, I set it to a binding. I have YG here for yank Git. And, and by just hitting YG on any Git repo, I, I now have the URL already copied to my clipboard and I can just paste it right into my terminal so that I can clone it. Uh, you could also get even more complex with this. And instead of having to copy the URL to clone it, you can make a user script that just clones the repo to a certain directory. Uh, having this level of power of being able to write your script in any language uh, gives you basically unlimited potential. A more complex example is this summarize script that takes the cute text, that temporary file that has the render text of the page and passes it through an LLM using Golama and then opens a new tab with that result. As you can see here, I, I make a new temporary file. I then pass the current text to a prompt that says summarize this web page. I then pass that through Pandoc, which the dash S flag will essentially give it a make it a standalone web page. And the LLM outputs in Markdown. So we convert that Markdown to a standalone web page. And then I have Cube Browser open that web page in a new tab. So this is great for when I'm browsing things like Hacker News or I'm just going through a news website and I just want the cliff note to this really, really long article. I can bind this to a key binding and boom, I have a summary cliff note courtesy of the LLM right there in my browser. And I didn't have to install any extensions and I was able to utilize tools that were already on my existing system. So those are some of the ways that we can bring that NeoVim-like configuration to the browser. And that's all I have for you today. You can follow me on any of these places and I appreciate your time.